Good evening and welcome to Mountainside's 111th reorganization meeting. In compliance with State Chapter 231 of the State uh, Open Meeting Act, adequate notice has been given to all members of the governing body and to the newspapers designated to receive said notice. Also notice of this meeting has been posted on the Borough Bulletin Board. I ask that you rise for an invocation followed by a salute to the flag which will be led by our Assemblyman John Bramick. Dear Lord, we ask that you protect our men and women serving our country in areas of conflict. Please protect those who serve us at home, our police, fire, and rescue squad. Give this council guidance to provide the best services possible for our community. But most of all, dear Lord, keep this entire Mountainside family safe and healthy for the oncoming year. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. I'd like to thank the assemblyman for being here this evening. As you can well imagine, he's got three or four towns that he would like to go and pay his respects to. A little later on in this evening, I'm going to, in part of my reorganization speech, give credit to a letter that the assemblyman just wrote today that I received, uh, which I sent back to him and said, I know all of Mountainside supports it, and uh, I will present that to you later on. John, as I told you, Mountainside certainly does appro uh, approve and appreciate the uh, letter that you sent to the governor today in regards to us uh, having our schools go under control of the state or county. And I know everybody in this room would support that, and I thank you for your efforts. Now I take a roll call of the council, please. Councilman Lane? Here. Councilman Messler? Here. Councilman Mirabelli? Here. Councilman Mortimer? Here. Councilman Schoen? Here. Councilman Turner? Here. You've all received a copy of the minutes of the regular meeting of December 19th of 2006. I'll entertain a motion to accept said minutes or correct if necessary. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Do I have any additions or corrections? Hold the council, please. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next, we're going to have our annual police commendations presented by Chief Debbie. And following that, we're going to have two resolutions regarding individual police officers. At this time, Chief. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First of all, on behalf of the uh, entire police department, I would like to take this opportunity to wish everybody a healthy, happy, prosperous, and most of all, safe new year. Also, I'd like to thank the mayor and council again for their uh, uh, allowing us to perform the uh, award ceremony each year. It's very nice to do this uh, on Channel 35. Say hi to all our Channel 35 people as well out there. And we have a real nice crowd here tonight. Uh, I'd also like to thank Captain Osija and his 2006 award committee that uh, they comprised and came up with these awards. Uh, he happens to be one of the <laughs> award recipients. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that happened. <laughs> <laughs> Our first award for the evening, if uh, you would come up, please, Officer Stinner, please. Normally, I, I write a little synopsis of uh, what occurred. Uh, Officer Stinner is here for the life-saving award, and the gentleman's life that he saved wrote us a letter, and I think it's more appropriate to read that letter. Dear Chief Debbie, on January 23, 2006, in the morning, I suffered a heart attack while sitting at the breakfast table with my wife. I went into a state of unconsciousness I had no pulse, and my heart stopped beating. My wife immediately dialed 911. Within minutes, Officer Jeffrey Stinner was at our house and immediately commenced CPR and fibrillation. Now, fibrillation is, we have what's called the AEDs, automatic electronic defibrillators, 
that we attach to a victim, and it will shock the victim only if the victim is deceased, stopped, if, he, if the heart has stopped completely. If the heart is moving at all, it will not shock the person. So Officer Stinner attached this uh, automatic defibrillator, and shortly thereafter, the ambulance arrived while Officer Stinner continued CPR. En route to Overlook Hospital, the medics applied numerous more shocks with the same type of equipment that we use at the house. I don't recall how many times the, the uh, instrument actually shocked the gentleman, but I knew it was multiple times in the house as well as en route to the hospital. I was kept in CCU for 10 days and made what the doctors termed a miracle recovery. Obviously, without the immediate response and professional treatment given by Officer Stinner, I would not be here today. I would like to take this opportunity to commend Officer Stinner and thank him for assistance and life-saving maneuvers. Additionally, he stopped by my house to inquire about my condition. This courtesy deeply appreciated and further compliments Officer Stinner's stature and respect for others. His fine example of the superior grade of the policemen we have in Mountainside today. And I congratulate you and the life-saving <laughs> Next group of awards go to uh, Captain Richard Osiege, if you would come up, please. Detective Donald Amberg. Detective Michael Jackson. And Officer Andy Huber. Let's gather around. During this past year, our Detective Bureau has been inundated with many different cases, ranging from residents sending money to Canada to collect, their, uh, to collect their million dollar winnings, just doesn't happen, to a house burglary where a stolen property was recovered and the suspects were under arrest in less than 24 hours. An outstanding job. In one such case, an anonymous resident, Councilman Keith Turner, <laughs> <laughs> discovered his credit card <laughs> had been compromised with an $1,800 charge. Now, there's a little story to this. Is Susan here today? I don't know. No. Susan, no. Susan's not here? No. Well, it happened to be her birthday, and uh, the councilman took her out. I, I don't, did you take her out to dinner, or did you just get the drinks to go? Yeah. <laughs> he actually went and bought margaritas. Uh, I think you got them to go, right? Yes. At one of our restaurants? Yes. They were to go. He took them home for her birthday. <laughs> but he noticed the next day, or a couple of days later, there was a charge of $1,800 on his credit card. Some drinks. And he, said, uh, he says I'm cheap. I spent $1,800 on a margarita. Yeah. $1,800 <laughs> for two drinks. That's right. Actually, you may have read in the Star Ledger, this was the skimming scam that was uh, all throughout New Jersey, mostly northern Jersey. And uh, a, a waitress had a little skimming unit in her. It's uh, smaller than a, than a uh, paging device. And she just scans your credit cards as your uh, charging your dinner and then she takes this machine to another computer and downloads all your credit information off of your magnetic strip and then puts it on her credit card magnetic strip so when they actually swipe it the next time it looks as though it's her her pictures on the credit card but all of your information is charged for whatever she's buying and in this case it was eighteen hundred dollars worth of drinks <laughs> <laughs> but through the quick action of Captain Richard Osija, Detective Don Lamberg, Detective Michael Jackson, and Officer Andrew, Andy Huber, a huge credit card skimming operation in Hudson County was shut down with the arrest of a number of in individuals. And the Secret Service is still running with this case. They have taken the case and it's expanding, it's getting larger and larger and larger. As I understand last, it's out of our state, it's beyond the state of New Jersey. But these guys, with the help of the anonymous resident, started the case. Through their combined rapid teamwork and diligence to duty, these officers exemplify their dedication to the residents of the borough of Mountainside. And this evening, the department awards them the Excellent Police Service Award. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, you want to come around? 
Chief, before you continue, do you want to ask the people in the hallway if they'd like there's some space up here, they can come into the room. There's space up here next to the wall. We have room around the wall over here to your left. If you'd like to come on in from the hall. If you'd like to make your way in, everyone's welcome. Up this way as well. If you'd like to help. <clears throat> Thanks, Jim. Right now, I'd like to call on the Honorable James DeRose, judge to come forward, please. And William Stolting. William is our new patrolman. He just joined us, and I'd like to have the judge swear in. William. OK, go right ahead. Chief, before he does that, I think uh, the commissioner has a resolution he'd like to read for the public. Very good. Would you like to keep? Sure, this is resolution 168-2006. Whereas it is the desire of the governing body of the Borough of Mountainside to appoint a probationary police officer to the Borough of Mountainside Police Department. And whereas the police committee interviewed several qualified candidates for this position of probationary patrolman for the Borough of Mountainside Police Department. And whereas Chief Debbie and the police committee have recommended the appointment of William Stolting as patrolman for one year probationary period. And whereas the governing body is desirous of appointing a probationary patrolman, now therefore be it resolved by the mayor and council of the Borough of Mountainside that William Stolting be appointed as probationary patrolman for the Borough of Mountainside Police Department, and be it further resolved that said appointment shall be effective December 13th, 2006, with the probationary period ending December 13th, 2007, at a probationary period salary of $32,000. And I make that resolution. Second. All of counsels in favor? Aye. 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 So be it. Your Honor. And would Anne Marie please come forward? Anne Marie is William's wife. If she would please hold the Bible. Stick it too far in. <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you, Wayne. Congratulations. Don't go far, Your Honor. <laughs> I would. Uh, also, Commissioner Turner, if you would please, I think you have another resolution, and then I'd like you to come forward as well. Uh, resolution. Why, am I getting something? <laughs> yeah, drink. The eighteen hundred bucks back. <laughs> Resolution 26-2007, whereas there exists a vacancy in the position of lieutenant in the Mountainside Police Department, and whereas it is the desire of the mayor and council of the Borough of Mountainside to fill such vacancy with a highly qualified individual, and whereas a number of eligible officers in the Mountainside Police Department have undergone extensive testing and evaluation as candidates for this position of lieutenant, 
And whereas all candidates during the selection process exemplified the high qualities and standards expected of the, of the police personnel in this community, and whereas the police committee and police chief have recommended the promotion of a candidate whose credentials and experience were found best to suit the needs of the borough in filling the position of lieutenant. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Mountainside that the following individual be promoted to the position of lieutenant in the borough of Mountainside with all the rights, responsibilities, and obligations attendant upon this position. Effective January 2nd, 2007, Richard Weigel is promoted to the position of lieutenant in the Mountainside Police Department. You make that motion. I have a motion, I have a second. Second. Sir. Hold the council, please. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Turner, please. Lieutenant Waggle. Thank you, Chief. Your program says next there's going to be a presentation. We were hoping to, but unfortunately it's not here. What we were do, uh, going to discuss with you, and many of you know of this, is the Watts Foundation was presenting the town with a uh, community bus. And all intended plans were supposed to be here. We were supposed to do a little formal presentation, but they had a construction problem and uh, we were hopeful to the 11th hour so this will take place sometime in the next month or so rather get it here built correctly than get it here early with a problem so we're going to be skipping that next I have eight uh, comments of council I will start with councilman Lane and come work my way this way if any member of council has any comments they wish to make at this time just want to wish the community a happy new year and extend my congratulations to lieutenant Weigel and to patrolman Stolten Much says it all for me too. Uh, the comment that I'd like to make is, as, as outgoing uh, council president, uh, I don't know if any of you saw in the uh, Star Ledger on, uh, I believe it was on Sunday, that uh, our, our mayor is the longest serving uh, municipal elected official, uh, I believe, I know in Union County, and we're not sure about the whole state, but uh, I'd just like to commend him on his years of service 
cer certainly he makes the job of my job as councilman and, and, and the rest of the councilman's job much easier with the work and, and, the, and the dedication that, uh, that he's shown throughout his years of service. And, and if it wasn't for the mayor, then Mountainside wouldn't be the town that it is today. And I think he should be commended for that. <laughs> That'll keep your speech shorter, too. <laughs> no, you're going to make me say something else. Well, I <laughs> deeply appreciate those words, but I assure each and every one of you sitting here and watching on TV, it could not be done without a council that I've had. I have been blessed with all these years of having councilmen who are working for this community. We didn't have egos. We weren't here for a political position. We weren't here to increase our... Um, professions they were here because they really cared about the community and when I talk to some mayors and I hear the bittering and the fighting and everything else we are blessed here we are blessed by the people that have sat up on this DS for the last 30 years every one of them has been a true mountainside resident and a true friend to me and to you as a community thank you Bob, to wish everybody happy new year and a healthy new year same to me to all of you happy new year at this moment, then, I'm going to ask for a motion to adjourn the 2006 governing body. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Hold the council. Councilman Main? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next, we're going to, I'm going to switch this agenda around a little tonight. We're going to um, resolution 12-2007. That is a resolution by which I am extremely proud to present to you. It is the reappointment of our municipal judge, Jim DeRose. And he has been our judge now for three years, and this is the time he has to get re-sworn in, which Martha, our clerk, will be doing. Being a judge, I think, this has to be a very difficult job because you have to enforce the law but to be a good judge, you also have to have a sense of compassion. You can't take everybody and hang them no matter how many times you would like to. And I can honestly say that three of the most critical people in the law enforcement community, police officers, prosecutors, and defending attorneys can be very cruel. And yet in three years, I have heard nothing but praise about Judge DeRose. I have heard Police officers say, I know he couldn't do this and that, but he was fair. I feel like he didn't just let the guy walk out the door. He did everything he could do. I heard from defending attorneys. You know, he could have come down harder. He had a little compassion, but he didn't let the guy go scot-free. And I think that speaks volumes to your honor, your integrity, your professionalism. And I am extremely proud that you're going to be our municipal judge again. And with that, I ask... Martha, if you'd please swear you in, Your Honor. Uh, yes, um, I, before we do that, the other attorney says to me, see, these guys keep you on your toes. I'd like an introduction of Resolution 12-2007. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Um, poll the board. Councilman Lane? Yes. Turner? Yes. Um, what's your name, Mortimer? Yeah, that's good enough. <laughs> yes. Paul? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <It's best>. Okay. <laughs> now, Martha, I've got it up here. It's been unanimously passed. You may swear in the judge. Okay. I, James DeRose, I, James DeRose, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. <laughs> the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, to true faith and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established in the United States, and to the governments established in the United States, and in this state, and in this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people. I do further solemnly swear, I do further solemnly swear, that I will faithfully, that I will faithfully, impartially, impartially, and justly perform, and justly perform, all the duties of the office. All the duties of the office. Of the municipal judge. Of 
the municipal judge. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Now, Your Honor, we're going to put you to work. You have to do two <laughs> swearing ins. <laughs> Councilman Lane, please meet the judge. Councilman Messler. I'd like to now call to order the 2007 governing body and ask that a roll call be taken. Councilman Lane? Here. Councilman Messler? Here. Councilman Mirabelli? Here. Councilman Mortimer? Here. 
Councilman Schoen? Here. Councilman Turner? Here. I'm going to read my year report to you all, but I'm not going to read the reports from each of the departments. This report, which is 11 pages long, is presently being printed and emailed to everyone of your homes in the next two weeks. I'm going to read my portion of the message right now. Dear neighbors, as I prepared to write this reorganization report, I could not help but to think about a story I once heard. A small girl was sitting on her grandfather's knee, and she asked, Grandpa, do all fairy tales start with once upon a time? After a short pause, her grandfather answered, No, darling, some start with once I'm elected. <laughs> we all remember that during the governor's campaign season of 2005, all we heard was that New Jersey wants and New Jersey needs property tax relief. After all, we are the heaviest taxed state in the United States. We heard promises of 20 to 25 percent property relief. We heard about reform for the public sector's health costs. We heard about pension reform. We heard multiple ways in which our taxes were going to be reduced. But what did we get? We got a 16 percent increase in our sales tax. This tax increases this tax increase, sales tax increase, plus all the other taxes that were enacted last year will yield the state of New Jersey $1.8 billion per year additional revenue. We also received a list of new items that we will now be taxed. Do you know that socks are considered a luxury in New Jersey now? It's a sales tax on them. They also tried to tax parking lots for commuters, even though we encourage mass transit. They proposed taxing community pool memberships. Thank goodness that was, res was rescinded. We saw a freeze placed on our legislators when they started to recommend reductions of benefits presently given to public employees. What we are not seeing is any reduction in state spending. All we now hear is that it's the town's faults. There are too many communities and we must consolidate these towns into lesser but larger agencies. This, Trenton says, will reduce costs. I say that this will give these people a larger pond from which they can feed. Do you really want our community to be governed by Trenton? Another suggestion from the state is the consolidation of services. Mountainside has been sharing services for over 25 years. We share our Board of Health. We employ part-time inspectors, a part-time borough engineer, a part-time senior citizen coordinator. We share our welfare director as well as our finance officer. Our administrator, part-time, is also our police chief. These are major tax savings with no loss of oversight or services. Another major tax savings is that no member of your governing body or any board member receives health coverage, pensions, or salaries. This has saved Mountainside millions of dollars for the past 25 years. Many communities say that their elected officials and board members are non-salaried, but they receive health costs, health coverage. In Mountainside, if this were to happen, the yearly cost would be over $250,000 per year. To date, Mountainside for 2007 has already been given mandated tax increases from the state and other agencies of over $200,000. This is before we even start our budget or start to do anything more for our residents, our taxpayers, and they want to take full control? In spite of all these mandated increases placed on Mountainside, last year we still accomplished an awful lot. We completed our five-year road reconstruction program. This has worked out so well that your council will continue this program for another two years and is planning to do another $2 million of capital improvements. The major road construction, while highly visible, was only one of the many projects and improvements for our community. We now have four lit recreation fields, two were done with very little local tax dollars, and two were completed with matching funds from the Field of Dreams program. We also have a new fund water slide at our pool, done without taxpayers' dollars. We will shortly receive a new community bus, compliments of the Watts Foundation. Please visit Mountainside's new website, www.mountainside-mt.gov. 
nj.com. As described to me by a local reporter, this is one of the best community websites in the entire county. Adam Lieb, and Adam is standing in the back row there, and I'd like to acknowledge him right now, Adam. A recreation department employee created this new site. High praises must be given to Adam for his excellent creation. You will see there is a tremendous amount of information regarding all of the borough departments and the borough services. This site also uh, provides useful links that Mountainside residents would want outside of our community. Our police department has received a new GPS system in the dispatch area that will be able to follow movements of all our patrol cars. This system is a vast safety benefit for our police officers in the fact that their location will always be available at the desk if they ever need assistance and the exact location where they will be at will be marked. This is a part of a grant submitted by Chief Debbie. Another point on this, and I recall one time, and this does happen from time to time, our police officers have to go into neighboring communities. And sometimes they'll get into neighborhoods that they're not familiar with. And I've heard where the police dispatcher is saying, where are you? And the officer, while driving, trying to keep up with the person he's pursuing, is also trying to look at a location as to where he may be. That will no longer be necessary. That officer can concentrate on what he is doing. We will know exactly where he is, and it, I think will be a benefit for him, especially in a strange community. We are also revamping our public works department by streamlining both its operation and by reducing the amount of physical space needed for this operation. Presently, your council is discussing with a private company to upgrade and enhance our TB35. In addition, to these in addition to these improvements, this system will allow borough officials to immediately announce emergencies and to announce school closings in the event of bad weather. This is being done with no taxpayer's money. It is being sponsored by companies similar to what you see on the PBS channels, where you'll see this program has been sponsored by and they'll give a, uh, a firm. As you may know, this administration filed suit on behalf of our town to seek our fair share of the dissolutionment money of the old regional system. This year, we completed the second phase of the suit where the Mountainside Board of Education <coughs> will receive another $1,750,000 plus. Thus, the total amount received by our Board of Education from this suit now totals over $8.5 million. High praises must be given to our borough attorney, John Post, and his firm, who not only fought this suit up and through the New Jersey Supreme Court, but also won it at a very favorable fee to this community. And this community, I think, owes John and his firm a big thanks, uh, hand of thank Thank you, John. When I don't write it down, I sort of get a little confused. This governing body still recognizes that there is a need for a community center and also knows the desires of many of our seniors to remain in town with some type of senior housing. Both of these programs are still being actively investigated by this administration, and we hopefully may present some concepts to you in the very near future. Please rest assured that this administration will continue to seek every cost-saving idea and will continue to apply for grants to help improve our community. We will continue to share services and streamline others as we carry our efforts in keeping Mountainside's taxes as the lowest effective tax rate in all of Union County. I thank you and the balance of the report will be mailed to you. Next I have the election of the council president. I'll entertain a motion. Move to uh, nominate uh, Keith Turner. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. second. Do I have any other motions? Hearing no other motions, I move that the motions be closed. In favor? So move. Hold the council, please. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Councilman Turner? 
Yes. Next, I have resolution 1-2007, adoption of the rules for the council for this year, and also resolution 2-2007, appointment of council to committees. I'll entertain a motion to accept both. So moved. Second. No, any questions or comments? Hold the council, please. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Chone? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Next, I have resolution 3-2007, <coughs> appointment of council liaison to the board committees. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments? Hold the council, please. Council <coughs> Councilman Lane? Whoa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <coughs> Councilman Lane? Said yes. 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 Councilman Messler? Yes. <coughs> Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Well, I think I'm going to do the, um, I'll, you just keep the record. <laughs> Next, I have resolution 4 2007. I'll entertain a motion. So I have a motion and I have a second. Second. I'd like to point out that we have a new addition to this board this year. David Frydenberg will be alternate number two. Uh, any other questions or comments? Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman, uh, what's your name there, Messler? Yes. Uh, Councilman Schoen? Yes. Next, I have resolution. 5-2007, um, I'll make a note on that. There's an addition to the library board, an appointment of Todd Garen, and everything else is the same. And also resolution 6-2007, and also resolution 7-2007. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. A motion, I have a second. All in favor, uh, I better poll council. Uh, Lane? Yes. Turner? Yes. Mortimer? Yes. Mirabelli? Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Yes. Next, I'm going to ask His Honor to come forward on the <coughs> Resolution 7 2007 and ask if he would please do the honors of swearing in the officers of the Mountainside Fire Company or Fire Department. And if you gentlemen would please step forward. Dave, they needed hey, Dave. They needed you. Oh, okay. You want to read? I'll do. Okay, Councilman. Councilman Mirabelli is going to read read the names off uh, for the audience. Uh, the, the the chief is Neil Williams Jr. The assistant chief is Kenneth Lawrence. The deputy chief is Robert Farley. The uh, another deputy chief is Gary Canigallo. Uh, uh, the captain is going to be Peter Essenplayer. Another captain will be James J. Debbie the third. We have as a lieutenant David La Lauricella, and another lieutenant is uh, Christopher Stapero. Of, of the office of, of the 
Okay. Well, this uh, According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Next, I have resolution 8, 9, 10, and 11. 8, 9, 10, and 11, I'll entertain, and 12. The 12th, we've already done. 8, 9, 10, and 11, I'll entertain a motion. Although it's been our uh, history to uh, make John Post sit. I've tried to avoid sit, that by sit, skipping sit, over some Sit, sit and, and, and sweat. Again, in accordance with my comments about the mayor and, and looking over, <laughs> The the uh, uh, reorganization booklet tonight. I, I would note that that John Post also has a, a long history of service to Mountainside. He's been the borough attorney for 35 years now. So I think this year, in in the light of the, his 35 years of service, we'll give him a pass this year, and I'll make that motion. Well, well, I have to say that I, I looked at the same agenda that you looked at and saw that Jim Debbie has been around for 35 years also <laughs> to figure out how it is that Jim wound up with so much more hair and so much less gray after these 35 years than I have. <laughs> he started younger. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabella? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. I knew they were going to do that. I tried to slip it over. Every year we generally leave John alone and they just go quiet and they let him sweat a little bit. And I figured this year I'd just throw it in and they caught it. Next I have uh, resolution 13-2007, uh, 14, 15, 16, and 17. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Councilman Lane? Uh, yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Murdimer? Yes. Mirabelli? Yes. Messler? Yes. Schoen? Yes. Next, I have resolution 18 2007 and 19 2000. No, I just take 18. 18 is designation of our official newspapers. So I'll moved. a motion. So second. moved. I have a second. Any questions? Uh, all in favor on that? Aye. 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 Okay, 19, I'll entertain a motion, and 20. So moved. Second. Um, I want to poll the council on those two. Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. On uh, number uh, 20, 21, the name of uh, Councilman Keith Turner will be inserted as council president. I'll entertain a motion for 20, 21, 22. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Um, next, I have uh, resolution 23 2007, the resolution authorizing the opening of the 2007 <laughs> temporary op operating budget. I'll entertain a motion on that. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments on that? Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. Uh, next, I have resolution 24 2007, 25 2007. I'll entertain a motion for those. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any questions or comments? Councilman Lane? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Councilman Mortimer? Yes. Councilman Mirabelli? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilman Schoen? Yes. At this time, I'll open the meeting to the public for audience participation. Before I, Ted, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Hello, Ted. <laughs> well, it's been my tradition me, every year to come up and um, say thank you to the uh, mayor and council 
professor this year with so many years of service. These guys really are just volunteers, <coughs> taking away time from their family and other pursuits that they could be doing, maybe being on the golf course, relaxing. I know they're putting a lot of time and energy. I want to echo what the mayor said, that it is one of the few politicians or political bodies that actually says they're going to do something, they actually get it done. If they can't get it done right away, they remember they made the promises and get to it as soon as they can in the next year. So for that, I'd like to thank them. I'd also like to mention and, and thank everybody that's in this booklet because a good majority of these people all volunteers and all put their time out or are part-timers or even they're being paid, put a little extra effort that seems to be in this town more than what is required. So for them, I want to say thank you also. Thank you, Ted. See, somebody snuck in on us. I didn't see him here. A, a Senator Tom Kane is with us this evening. Tom Jr., how are you? Barry? Hi. Hi. I just want to reiterate what, what Ted said, because that's, so you took the words right out of my mouth. But I also wanted to say when, <coughs> when somebody devotes the time to the community like you do, um, it, it should be recognized. And I'd just like to say one thing, that there was somebody in this, on this governing board right now who put a lot of time into an election this year, and he should be praised, uh, Glenn Mortimer, for his run for the uh, County Freeholder Board. It's not a tough, it's not an easy thing to do, to go against the freeholders, to have a lock on the, on the system. But Glenn really gave 125% uh, uh, of his time. I went to a lot of political fundraisers this year across the board for some charity work that I do. Most all times I saw Glenn there in one shape or another, one form or another, and also, you know, Children's Specialized Hospital is very involved, but he put a lot of time and energy into everything he did and just wanted to congratulate him. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Tom, would you like to say something? So you got lucky. You didn't hear me blasting Trenton, so you're, you're not... I I'll hug you for the entire thing. Oh, you heard it. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that's closest to the property taxpayer. And that's one of the fights that we've been engaged in. We've been successful in blocking some of the most onerous uh, pieces of legislation so far. We've got more work to do. We need to prevent any surprises. And one of the ways we can do that is having a tremendous partnership that we have between you, Mr. Mayor, this council, and our legislative offices and activities, between myself and John Brown and Eric Munoz. We will continue that fight this year to ensure we truly do get property tax reform and relief this year and better coordination as well. So thank you for your leadership. Sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Unless anybody else would like to address the council, I'll ask for the public portion to be closed. So moved. Second. And uh, any council comments in closing? Um, Bob, I'd just like to make a comment. I didn't uh, see that uh, Mike Disco has been 17 years a borough engineer, and uh, him and his firm do a great job um, for this municipality. And uh, sitting on the planning and zoning board, um, his guidance is um, very much appreciated to the members, and uh, he really does care about this community. I'd just like to say thank you to him also. Thank you. Mike Disco. <laughs> Bob, thank you, because that is an omission on my part, and you're a thousand percent correct. Mike Disco, even though I tease him daily, has his heart and soul in this community more than you'd ever know. And every time he does something good, I'll say, Mike, the boys did great, because he has three sons working with him. <laughs> and uh, that's a little inside joke, but no, Bob Messler is a thousand percent correct. All of this road reconstruction, the uh, problems that we faced at the pool when the slide went in and all, Dr. Disco does it. He does it because he doesn't even live in this town, but he loves this town. One of his sons has gotten smart and moved here. Mike may get his wife to get, maybe, I've talked to her. She may be moving here. He may not be, but that's <laughs> But no, uh, Dr. Disco, Mike Disco has been a tremendous asset to this community. And uh, thank you, Bob, for taking care of my omission. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Schmooze. Do we have something in the other room?
We have something in the other room. It's Keith Turner's credit card. We're buying everybody a drink. Eating a turn.